Hello there. Welcome to Delight Channel, Development, Empowerment and Leadership Initiative. This is an NGO where we are passionate about world transformation and our vision is world transformation, one man at a time, one community at a time. Let me start this way with a question. Is entrepreneurship for you? What do you think? Why am I asking that question? This question has been asked in continuation of the series that we started a couple of weeks ago on entrepreneurship made simple. And this week, like we promised last week, we want to try and give you a basic checklist that you can compare yourself against so that either you have started, you are thinking of starting, or you are not even sure if you should start or not, you can rate yourself against this checklist and see whether entrepreneurship is really for you. I hope you will find this video very useful. But before I get into that, let's do a quick recap. We defined last week entrepreneurship as the process in which an individual sets up a business, taking on financial risk in the hope of a profit. And if you watch that video, we trace the root of that word from a French word called entrepreneur, which talks about somebody who takes charge. Okay, so we are saying that an entrepreneur is somebody who takes charge. But for me, my definition of entrepreneurship is an in, is a process in which we solve problems. So if I say it differently, an entrepreneur is somebody who solves problems. We will still come back to the question of solving problems because it's a big topic that we are going to unpack. But for this week, let's ask this question again. Is entrepreneurship for everybody? Is entrepreneurship for you? How do you know? Check out this list that we found from successful entrepreneurs across the globe, different climes, different continents, and they are always consistent wherever you find successful entrepreneurs. So let's go. The first thing that is common to all successful entrepreneurs is that they take initiative. They are not people who dwell only in the realm of wish and talk. They are always looking out for opportunities. They are looking out for gaps, for problems, for a difference that they can make. And when they find one that they think they are able to exploit, they do not look back, they run after it. Closely associated with that is the trait of risk taking. They are risk takers because they know that even though they have a line of sight to the market, they may not necessarily be able to create a path to the market and they are comfortable with it. So if you are an individual that every loss weighs you down and you really can't get over it very quickly, if you are thinking of entrepreneurship, you may need to think very long and hard because in entrepreneurship, it is not a straight line at all. You may miss, you may hit and the hits may not even be sufficient. But one thing is certain, if you add the third trait of grit, grit, grit speaks to persistence. It speaks to the ability to stick with it and keep going with it. As the research has found out that IQ is not really what you need to succeed, but what you need to really succeed is grit, persistence, ability to keep going even when you when the road is not straight and there are challenges on the road so if you are able to add grit to it then you are probably on your way to becoming a successful entrepreneur one thing that has also been found of successful entrepreneurs is that they are action oriented it's not just enough to have a plan they go about getting it done they are people who take action, they take steps to achieving whatever they have set their mind to do. Another attribute that we found is that they are facilitators. I did not use the word executioner or somebody who leads it on purpose because the word facilitator helps me to describe a couple of things that are very complementary. I'm speaking to leadership. There are people who can provide vision 
They can set the direction. They know what they have. They know what they do not have. So they can bring in people that can complement them to lead them to where they are going. Meaning that if you are a lone ranger and all you want to do is walk by yourself, depending on where you are serving, you may want to ask again whether you are really out for entrepreneurship because you most likely will need more than your skill or capacity to bring that, 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 that vision alive. So they lead, they collaborate, they can leverage on other people's capacity, they are visioner, they do what they need to do to get their dream to come to life. And last but not the least is the fact that they have a competency. There's something they know how to do. Sometimes it is technical, sometimes it is soft. Some people are very great with mobilizing people. They can bring them together, they can organize them. They may not be subject matter experts, but they have the skill to build a very good team and gel them together and unleash them in the direction of, of the goal that they are pursuing. And in no time, they get their vision out. So, they are people who've got certain competencies. They know what they know. And like I said about facilitation, they can find what they do not have and then they can run. So if I can summarize what I've said, I'm saying that the DNA of um, entrepreneurs include things like risk takers, action oriented, they have greed, they facilitate, which is where they have leadership, execution, motivation, and they have a core competency. But I cannot finish without adding this because this is what gels and glues everything together. And it's a word that starts with letter P. That word is passionate. You can go far, not just in entrepreneurship, in anything in life. You are not likely going to go far without passion. Passion is what helps you to stay on. Passion is what keeps you going when everything else has failed. Passion is what attracts other people to that your vision. Passion is that infectious energy that when people see the level of energy that you are committing to the dream that you are pursuing, even when they do not believe or they don't understand, that sheer passion gets them to come on board and to lend their shoulder to the Lord and to make a difference. So, the question we're asking today is, therefore, if you compare yourself to this checklist, how do you rate? Do you think that entrepreneurship is for you? Remember that between here, where you have the dream, and there, where that dream becomes reality, there is a law that's going to go on. If you cannot confidently say yes, 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 yes to most or all of these characteristics that we have described, maybe you do not have the DNA of entrepreneurship. Now, does that mean that you have to run far from entrepreneurs? No. Remember what I said last week. It could be that you are currently an entrepreneur. If you do this evaluation, you need to decide whether you want to continue or you want to alter course. If you are thinking of entrepreneurship, this guides you to know whether it is something you want to pursue or you want to leave. And if you are found that you are an entrepreneur, in subsequent videos, we will then go deeper into how do you go from here to there in a manner that it is optimal, you minimize your wounds, you minimize your detours, you minimize, it, you minimize your wandering and meandering, and your journey can be more straightforward and direct. And if you are listening today or watching today and you realize that entrepreneurship may not be for you as an active player, remember what led us here. What led us here is asset creation. And we are saying that if you have aggregated enough funds, you need to create assets, which are the things that pay you. So even if you are not actively involved, if you understand how entrepreneurship works, you understand the critical building blocks for making it successful, you can actually learn that your aggregated funds into a viable entrepreneurial venture such that even though you are not an active player, 
you can still be a player and that asset you are creating can pay you. Ah, I've said a lot today. Forgive me for being so intent, but I think it is necessary that you check this box before we go too far into it. So, irrespective of how you rate in, this, in the checklist that I just presented, next week we will be taking it a little further to say, now that you have decided to play as an entrepreneur, what do you need to know? How do you start? What will it entail? What do you do? How do you do it? What should you not do? All that will be served hot and spicy next week if you make it a date here. Remember that this video is not just for you. If you know anybody who needs to know, tell them, send them the link, share the link with them. Whatever you need to do, get this into their hands so that they too can benefit from it and we can spread the joy. We will continue from this point next week. But don't ever forget that Tim Mark is still my name and all I'm trying to do is what? Make a little difference. Thanks for being here this week and see you next week. Bye.